for sure, for sure. And um, do you think like, because the people that you mentioned that had warned the industry around fi- that there's a, another financial crisis due uh, because of these practices, um, do you think the industry didn't hear what they were saying or didn't understand what they were saying? I think it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated issue. So it's not only, you know, the Pandora's warning, you know, the, the blind, whatever, investors and policymakers, it's, it goes deeper than this. So it's, it's a, and the issues and the problems that we are facing go deeper than the three or four factors mm-hmm. that I've mentioned. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we, we know, we may come back to that because I think, I think you mentioned other topics that you wanted to raise or issues that you wanted to, to raise today. And, and I think we, we can start answering them in the course of these questions. But, you know, to make a long story short, yes, there are many problems. Uh, but it's it's fairly complicated. And I think what the crisis did, it magnified them. Mm -hmm. So what the crisis did is it puts the lens, the magnifying lens on some pre-existing, you know, problems. And in a way, you know, of course the crisis is terrible. It's having, you know, terrible economic uh, consequences across, you know, emerging markets, but also in the developed world and, you know, unemployment rates, are, are getting, you know, very quickly spiking up to very high levels. So of course it has, it's having effect in the real world, but, and very terrible negative effect, but I'd like to be mildly and cautiously optimistic. So mm-hmm. the flip side of these negative effects is maybe people, you know, will open up their eyes, realize that they need to change. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic and, and I think, you know, some changes will happen hopefully in the coming weeks. For sure, for sure. And I remember, Nick, when we met um, in March in the city um, at TSAM, um, the prices for oil as measured by WTI index was at that point in time, uh, $41 um, a barrel. Um, and you were very, very bearish back then. Um, today it's around $12. It's approximately um, 70% drop um, in just seven weeks. Is it really due to the Saudi-Russian rivalry or um, do you think it's the slowdown of the world economy that's causing it? Very good question and very good point. And for short, for short, no. So, so, um, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on that topic because it's typically the kind of, you know, not shallow issue, but it's a kind of issue upon which the media and the politicians will focus. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. There is a terrible Russian Saudi rivalry. It's crazy. It's getting out of hand. The sky is falling. So, so in part, it's true to a certain limited extent, but to a large measure, it is not important. It's exaggerated. And the media circus and the politicians are exaggerating. So for short, no, it's not only because of the, you know, Saudi Russian rivalry or, uh, or or the current you know whatever enmity enmity between you know His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman and President Putin or you know this has very little to do with the price of oil and, and to make a long story short it's a reflection of some very much bigger and broader macroeconomic financial and industrial and geoeconomic uh, trends that are reshaping the world economy. And once again, these trends pre-existed the crisis Mm -hmm. and the crisis only magnified and perhaps accelerated them a little bit, but I'm afraid it goes much deeper and it's much broader than the theatrical, you know, OPEC Russian uh, uh, rivalry that, that, you know, made it to the front page of, of the financial press for the past six, seven weeks.